from Frozen Head State Park in Tennessee, the home of the Barkley Marathons. I'm Annika. And I'm Tim. And we are the producers of this Kickstarter project. The official race policy is that it's a 100 mile race, five loops around the park, and that all people who fall short of that have indeed failed, but people have their own concepts of success and failure. And for some people, just to get back to camp alive is all they want in the world. The Barkley Marathon is a 100 mile non-stop foot race over raw terrain. Runners have 60 hours to finish, but the trail is so difficult that in its 25 year history, only 10 have succeeded. It is a different kind of race, so it's not, the course isn't the same every year. You know, we're not even sure what the course is going to look like. You know, there's rumors that, that it's it being made more difficult this year. That we will not you don't know what time the race well. is going to start. When it gets dark, don't expect uh, when, when to it be starts raining, when the fog comes in. That's a sob When you've been out there for 25, the woods, 30 you come hours on some of their 20 to 30 sleep. feet tall, um, have a stem that big. You, you, you the thorns have about that long. These are from these the briars, saw briars, they like to call them here, so uh, um, you're not getting a uh, buckle when you're, when you're done. You have to get the reward for finishing yeah, five loops is not having to go on a sixth call, loop, right? a That's the story, which is true. You That's step yeah, into I mean, it with your leg, think that once you've done one pulls loop, down from it, the back it, it's all and piece of cake, remember it. Uh, the problem is, is that if you're lucky enough to make it to laps three and four, it, you're going backwards and and so so it's all everything you see going in in uh, those counterclockwise loops are things that you only would have seen if you would have looked backwards at the beginning of the race and so it, it so it really is a new experience every lap that you go around uh, you know a lot of people think it gets easier once you once you've been through it once but I, I can guarantee it doesn't get any easier <laughs> I believe it may specifically say on the entry form that we will not treat you well. Don't expect to be coddled and pampered. That's a saw briar. Out in the woods, you come on some of them, they're 20 to 30 feet tall, have a stem that big, and thorns about that long. These are from these briars, saw briars, they like to call them here, so um, they're, they're just nasty little plants. Yeah. Through. The uh, country people had a name for them, they were called wait a minute. Because you step into it with your leg and a piece pulls down from the back and snags your ear. I like this race, it, uh, it'll definitely test you in every which way. There's nothing in the military I did that was this hard. And so I tell people, like, I, you might want to rethink this because <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's no joke. It, it, I truly think it's the world's toughest trail race. So we didn't really, never really thought of it that this will be the hardest race. But we felt like you would put something out there that was right at the limit of what people could do. You know, people always, one of the big motivators in running ultras is that people want to challenge their limitations. They want to see how much, how much they can do. If you're going to face a real challenge, it has to be a real challenge. You can't accomplish anything without the possibility of failure. Pretty much everybody you see go out there, you really want them to succeed. You know that most of them won't. And there is kind of a, maybe a dark humor <laughs> to all the things that go on. Some of the failures are spectacular and really funny. But you like to see people have the opportunity to really find out that something about themselves. There's this self-induced aspect of um, you've struggled, you've overcome, you've gotten through, then you're confident and uh, you both enjoy the rest of your life more, but also you feel like you can do things and you take on challenges that you wouldn't otherwise try and you get to points that you wouldn't otherwise reach because you take on those challenges. The runners will um, have a number when they start the race. And they take the book out of its wrapping and find the page number that matches their race number. So if you get uh, race number 35, that means 
Uh, every time you come to a book, you have to pull out page 35 of that book. And they tear it off and bring it back. And to have your loop count, you have to have your page from each book. They're unofficial checkpoints. They, they give us the assurance that the people did the course. They give the other runners the assurance because some people will have a tendency to think maybe someone else is cheating and not doing the right thing. And some of the people can't find their way around and will come back and believe in their heart they did the loop when who knows where they went. Well, to make sure you know you've done the course and you found the right spots, and then of course to make sure that, that Laz can tell at the end that you've been everywhere you were supposed to be. So put out along the way, and, and especially I mean, it's clear that a lot of the locations are at the top of something and then at the bottom of something and at the top of the next thing so that you can't, that you have to do all the hard parts of it. But when you're there, uh, it's a bit of a scramble sometimes, actually. I mean, you're looking for it potentially, and that, that sometimes that's straightforward, and sometimes not, even if you know you're in the right general area to find the right tree or the right rock that it's under is not not so obvious. And, and then you have to get back, and before the cutoff, start the, the next loop. And they'll have a new number for that loop because, of course, their old number of those pages are gone. <laughs> Uh, I think people have often said that you could charge a huge fee and people would pay it and come. We charge a dollar sixty just to apply and we don't give the dollar sixty back, we keep it. And that's my retirement plan. For years we charged a white shirt. Now I have a lot of white shirts. So we charged socks and until I had lots of socks and now we're charging a flannel shirt until I get flannel shirts and plus for a dollar sixty a license plate if people have complaints I can just laugh. <laughs> we the producers of the documentary have a confession to make. We are not big sports fans. Barkley Marathon though to us is much more than a sporting event. Our documentary will explore the human stories behind the spectacular failures and the rare triumphs. We want to get beyond just the physical elements and examine the mental endurance that pushes the runners to carry on in a race where the only certainty is pain. Our project will also delve into the history of the Barkley and its connection to Frozen Head State Park as well as Brushy Mountain Prison. We want to be there to cover the racers as they climb their 55,000 feet of cumulative elevation. And of course, we want to learn all that we can about the crazy self-proclaimed hillbillies that created the Barkley Marathons. I mean, we're just a couple of hillbillies from out in the hills of Tennessee that put on a race. The Kickstarter funding is going to help us hire a local crew, rent our camera equipment, rent our sound equipment, provide food for the crew, will help us get the required motion picture insurance, and many more needed resources but we can't do any of it without your support. So thank you. Man, this would be such a, uh, uh, I guess the only term, it would be a ball buster of a race. <laughs> Thank you guys for checking out our Kickstarter project. We appreciate your support. 